And then I Sarah, just, yeah. Sarah, send send Patty Rag the the link for today. For some reason, she didn't get it. I sent her the Bevan Gibson link. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Why not? Okay. Sure. <laughs> some reason that Eminem song uh, with the real Slim Shady just stand up is going through my head as we have all these people logging in as Bevan Gibson. But um, anyway, welcome everybody to the ICAPS Learning Community. Um, I'm going to hand, I believe Tara is going to be our MC for today. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Welcome, everyone. Let's go ahead and get started. As usual, we like to put up our goals for the ICAPS learning community here as we're fulfilling our mission from the Transitions Academy. And we've had some great conversations in our prior meetings, and we're looking forward to keeping that going with sharing information, learning from each other, asking questions. And today we've just kind of set up a few slides to facilitate that discussion, but we're really looking forward to hearing where we go with it. So um, let's start sharing. So our first question that we have for today, and again, people feel free to bring up any questions, concerns, or anything that you have. This is your group, but um, we thought we'd start with the idea of recruitment, since that's been on everyone's minds. Um, do you have any re new recruitment strategies? And hopefully some from your action plan. We've heard some really great discussion here and there over the last week about what's happening from these action plans. So we'd love to hear about that. Do you have any new strategies that are in the works or coming soon around recruitment? Um, we do. <clears throat> One thing that we're looking forward to doing is um, implementing student ambassadors in our program. So they would be um, paid student ambassadors. And we're looking for very trusted um, people in their communities um, when we identify the student ambassador. <clears throat> so um, they will go out and go into the communities, um, work with students to listen to what they want to know more about the program. Um, they're going to help us identify social media that's more popular for our populations and help us with social media posts. That is such a great idea. If you see me looking away, it's just because I'm writing that down because it's awesome. And don't be surprised if one of us emails you and asks you to allow us to capture that and post it somewhere or share it with the field. That's, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Chair, I'm already writing Carrie an email right now. So she's, <laughs> yeah, it's happening. What a great idea. They're the masters, right? Can I ask a question about that? Are your students ESL students or um, native speakers? We are going to do both. We're going to have um, one from each of the populations. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, but will you have one from each of the language groups, your major language groups? We're going to start small. We already have some staff members that speak Spanish. So um, we might target our uh, French speaking students because we have a large Congolese population in our community. So um, we're going to start with it small and see if we can expand it um, as we go along. Carrie, I'm, I'm curious, are you doing that for your, um, for all of your adult ed program or are you gonna specialize or what kind of, what are your thoughts there? For the whole program. Oh, yeah. yeah. Will you be able to do it also, since we are in the ICAPS learning community, I have to ask this question. Do you plan to um, have specific ones for ICAPS as well? Yes, yes. Nice, great. That's awesome. Any other questions about that or other recruitment strategies that you'd like to share? Dan's got his hand up. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, Dan, uh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, 
Yeah, so we have we have two partnerships that we've formed. This is specific to um, ICAPS or IET. Um, so we've partnered with two municipalities and the high school districts within the municipalities. So um, we've been able to have them responsible for recruiting the students, as well as the employers that they that the municipality works with within the chambers. Um, so. While we will still do our normal recruitment, the responsibility for these particular cohorts is on our partners. So um, I think that it's kind of unique for us. It may be, you know, this may not be unique in other areas, but typically we, we provide or we do all the recruitment for these, um, these programs. So this is, like I said, unique to us where we're not solely responsible for um, recruitment. Actually, the, our partners are. So. That's cool. And is that underway or? Uh, yeah, it's we're the, the one municipality we're going to launch in end of summer. So it will primarily be in the next fiscal year. Um, and one is one is currently underway with um, uh, Village of Addison. So. Awesome. All right, you'll have to let us know how that goes. So are you having partners work together like as an industry? Like if you've got a couple of welding people or a couple of healthcare, are they working together or are they just independently recruiting? Uh, well, it's specific to industry. So um, these are both manufacturing um, cohorts. So they're working with the manufacturers in the area. Both municipalities that we're working with are heavy manufacturing close to the airport. Um, so it's, it's specific to that sector. Dan, could you talk just a little bit more about kind of, you know, who, like, how did you broach this? How did you sell this? No, you can't talk about that. <laughs> uh, so uh, we, uh, we, we work with the high schools already providing some of the core programming. Um, and we've been at you know, uh, getting municipalities on board. So we approached the economic economic development arm of each of the municipalities. Um, they have a good working relationship relationship with the high schools as well. So we use that relationship with the high school districts to kind of you know ease our way into speaking to whoever's in charge of the economic development for those two areas. Um, and once we got in, we we're able to make the sell that you know this is good for not only the constituents that you serve, but for your employers as, you know, as well as um, who are constantly saying they need, you know, a skilled workforce, um, uh, especially on the manufacturing side. They always want a skilled workforce. They don't know what that means, but they, you know, they, they want a skilled workforce. So we were able to just, um, you know, provide the cert certification programs uh, and they had some interest. So uh, the details of the certification programs they had interest. So it was more of relationship with the high school school district that got us into the economic development piece of each uh, or area of each of the municipalities we work with them so neat thank you for speaking more dan i appreciate it and and for i mean i i i love that messaging i think that's really valuable and it's helpful for other people to hear the messaging that you have used to, you know, that have led you to success. Can I ask a question? Sure, go ahead. Daddy. Um, so we have a manufacturing ICAPS already built that we did like several years ago. And because it was a two-year program, is there any way that I can um, have it like converted into certifications or what would I need to do to have it like become more short-term certifications, um, IETs. Shoot me an email. I'm gonna put my email in the chat. Okay. Shoot me an email and we'll set up a time to talk. So right. I can, I mean, I don't wanna give you any immediate answers just because I'm not familiar with, honestly, I can't even tell you which program you're with right now. Because I'm with I'm, Kishwaukee College. Okay, I'm still connecting names and programs. That's okay. <laughs> But and I'm a brand um, new director, so I, I'm still like learning the logistics of some of the building parts of classes. I've done a few things, but okay. not definitely not um, you know, all by myself. So <laughs> sure. Shoot me an email and we'll set up a time that okay. we can talk either on the phone or via Zoom, which I'm happy to do with anybody on a call. If you've got questions, you can email me questions or if you want to 
shoot me an email and say, hey, there's four of us that we've got a bunch of questions. We'll set, I'll set something up and walk you through what you need to do, how you need to do that on the approval side of it. Um, Sarah and Bevan are also great resources mm -hmm. if you're building it and trying to get all the right pieces put together. So, you know. Yeah, I just I'm, didn't know how I would take a two-year program, which we've had a couple successful people over the years, but it's been a while since we've run that because it's so long and cumbersome. Right. I was just kind of thinking I would like to break it into more certifications um, so we can see some, you know, success with it. Sure. Okay, thank you. Yep. Keep it coming. Good questions, good ideas. Anyone else? <laughs> Another one that we're actually being requested to do from our college is they, they got the CAP it or the CAP IT grant yep. um, at our at our uh, our college and they're asking if I would build an IT bridge. I know we have the information from um, ICCB already on there. So that's another one. I just don't know how many I can personally run at a time. I don't want to overwhelm myself. So um, any suggestions on going about doing? <laughs> I, I know I have to turn in the paperwork, obviously, part of it. Um, but it is a big thing because we're getting like a Facebook something in our community now um, in Sycamore. The Calabaria, um, Amazon, Facebook, all these big companies are coming. Right. I think they're asking for that. So let's that's see. gonna be me again. <laughs> yeah. Because you I'm and also, I'll be talking quite a lot yeah. this this next Because I'm also months. helping with the Capit grant some. Okay. And so yeah, add that to the list of in the email, just keep the email going. Just put <laughs> okay. them all in there. <laughs> we'll have a big launch. Well, this is the first time I've written an RFP and it's obviously going to be a fun year. So I cannot I'm, officially help you with that. Darn, <laughs> and I know you can't, <laughs> but it might help with the wording on how we, you know, implement it in, you know, just by talking to you might help me word it better in our program, so. Patty, I'm sure many people on here can feel your pain of, you know, that you're going through right now. So that's, um, Mandy, did you have something to share or am I picking on you? You were a little bit of both. Well, I was going to say, I appreciate the information from Dan about, uh, or not Dan, from Carrie actually about the, we appreciate you too, Dan, but the student ambassadors, but we are actually implementing uh, just in a few weeks, uh, the National Adult Education Honor Society and the nominations from teachers are due this week. So it occurs to me that that'd be a great pool of students, even if we can't pay them to draw in and maybe be student ambassadors and student mentors to others in the program. Um, so I'm looking forward to that part. And I think they'd be a great group to draw from because they've already been identified as their, from their teachers based on their cooperation, their good attendance. And um, I think the other component was self-reliance, <laughs> you know, the element of being able to self you know, work on what they need independently. So interesting stuff. And then we have been using Textedly for outreach to some of our IET and bridge components. We had to very quickly put together an IT bridge to lead into an IET. IT, IET. Um, so we are working on a bridge for IET right now and recruiting for it using in good part texting was a big component to get uh, a larger pool of students interested. And you found that texting helped? Yes, our uh, uh, feedback from students is that they don't check their email. I don't know if we've all heard this or not, uh, but they do check their phones. And so even just a quick 160 character message, a little bit less than that, because you have to include the text stop to end, you know, part of the, the baseline, uh, but texting it to them saying who to reach out to, then gives them a, an immediate outlet. And I think we said free bridge to IT classes, you know, bridge to free IT classes, when you throw that word free in there, it's a big blaring sign for students. So the emails were great and you can include a lot more information, but sometimes less is more, especially when you're trying to hook them in. Awesome, thank you. Thanks, Mandy. And I'm gonna go ahead and put in my usual plug um, because we get so many good ideas from all of you. So, I mean, obviously Tara and I are both writing those down and we'll, we'll be in touch, but if you have anything to share that are, you know, we'll either put that on the excellence in adult ed, the promising practices and, or in the ICAPS um, and some of them will be duplicated. 
So make sure that um, you, you share those because we'd love for everybody in the state to benefit from the successes that you have. And Patty, I'm thinking about you, to, if, if you're starting something new, yes, you want to talk to Angela, but there are many experienced people yeah. in the state also that um, we can help you hook up with. Or, you know, if you're hearing what Patty's saying and would like to help support Patty, please put that in the chat so she knows that there are a lot of people that have experienced that that can help a new director out. So we appreciate that and congratulations. Thank you. You mentioned, you mentioned Amazon, which made me think of our friend, Will Durden, um, who is here again today. So I don't know, Will, are you willing to share any thoughts? I'm kind of putting you on the spot. So I'll try to slow down my pacing in case you need a little time. To <laughs> I'm prepped that I was ready to jump in. So you're good, Sarah. Great, okay. Yeah, you know, this has been a huge topic for a long time uh, in Washington State. So we're definitely partnering with you on thinking about recruitment, which is an ever evolving conversation. Uh, something that, I, that I've uh, heard here that I would echo is your first strong base for recruitment is knowing that you've built a program that people want. And so I think that what I've heard from folks around saying there's interest in this area, and so we're going to build a program in that area, that's really key because that's going to be your first guide to knowing that you've built a program that people are going to want to actually take. One thing we've heard, certainly if you have a, a navigator or a point person for your ICAPS program, or maybe that's you, the director, uh, going to the more traditional ABEESL classes to do some of those in-class sessions can be really useful. Uh, but what we've learned from that too is that if you can bring back, once you've had some students graduate and get jobs, if you're able to keep track of them and have them come back so that they can come talk to your ABE ESL classes. And a tip that I picked up to share with you is have them wear their work uniform. If they come to the classroom and share uh, the I was in this program, I graduated from the program, I have this job, I like this job. And if they're wearing their scrubs, if they're bringing in their welding shield, uh, if they've got a tool from the trade that they can hold in their hands that they can bring with them, anything, you know, they're gonna be able to speak to what it was like to be a student in the program and that's really key. But for them to really highlight that work side and for potential students to see what that looks like on the other side of the equation. Uh, we found that there's been some great success with that. That can also be a motivational tool if they're coming in to maybe, um, maybe they actually come to the ICAPS program. So that's not necessarily recruitment because they're talking to people who are in the program, but that's still a motivating thing for students who are in the program to see that. So I think that can help with retention and motivation. But again, even coming back to your ABE ESL classes that you're offering, um, especially for students who might be in that threshold decision-making space, or even if you're holding a beginning of quarter uh, or pre-semester orientation, to have them come to the orientation. So think about um, that. That's a, a cue to your, to your teachers or maybe your navigator, if you have one, to try to keep track of those students. That's something that I hear a lot from our programs is that they lose track of the students once they leave and and you know students they move on with their lives and they don't necessarily uh know or think to to look back to you as the program that got them where they are today but if you can keep track of a couple of students and have them come back sometimes that's really powerful thanks will hey and um yeah so getting some nice uh, uh, Hallelujah is in the in the chat for what you're saying. Does anybody have any questions specifically about Will, what Will talked about since we have him here today? If you have any questions for him, or do you have anything else that maybe that um, jogged your 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 brain to think about something else that you want to share that you're doing for recruitment strategies? Feel free to unmute yourself and talk if you want to. As you're thinking about whether you have any questions or thinking about whether there's something that you want to share, let me just go ahead and kind of prime the pump for what's coming up in the rest of our um, session today. We're kind of bookending. We're talking about how do we get people in, but then we also want to talk about how do we prepare them to leave us successfully. So obviously, you know, you want to have that successful training program. Um, you know, Will talked about that 
uh, retention and motivation piece of that. But we want to talk specifically about how do you prepare them for that job search at the end. So we're going to ask for some resources of that as well. Um, okay, and, and Patty, Patty's putting her email in in case anybody wants to reach out to her and give her some, some ideas and some help. So thank you for that. Um, and Will, some people are saying great tip about the uniforms and tools. I agree. I love that one. I think that's just such a huge, huge motivator. Have you found that in um, the times that we're in now, have you done some of that remotely? Like have you had students come and visit in different ways? You know, I haven't heard that story, but that's a great reach out for me to find out. I will go back to our navigator group and see if they've had any luck with that. I would think it would be equally powerful though. I have a couple of powerful stories to share, and I guess I didn't think of them in terms of recruitment before, but now that we're talking about student ambassadors and these ideas, they were powerful experiences for me. So I can only end up over the years. And so I can only imagine what they did for the students. So shout out to Wabanzi Community College, but um, on one trip in teaching and manufacturing ICAPS, um, one of our teachers helped secure a relationship with a local company and we were able to take the students to that company and take a tour and one of our former students was actually employed at the company and was able to talk to our students about her experiences and how she was able to get through the program and um, it was just amazing just to have them go to the type of company that we were studying and talk with the people there and I know coronavirus has you know, pose some serious challenges with traveling and visiting, but now that things are opening up, um, it, it was a really good experience. And then another time on a visit to uh, one of our other campuses, we had a student ambassador who had gone through our program and was now studying at the college and she was the one who gave the tour. So just adding her to the campus tour that day was so powerful for our students. So again, in kind of that spirit of keeping track of where our students are going. And if you have one or two students who are studying, um, you know, at a local college, if you're not at a college, or if you are at a community college who, you know, went on to credit classes, it was just, it was really powerful for the students. So just some things to think about. And like I said, kind of through the lens of recruitment, you know, it just kind of changed the way I was looking at those experiences, so. Anyone else have anything to share around recruitment? I will just mention um, Rebecca, because we know Rebecca's traveling, um, but she did put that posting photos of the students in Facebook. Um, so I'm thinking about what Will had to say about having, you know, have that uniform on. And I was thinking what a, what a cool thing to have that, you know, both those and the, the students see it, but then also possibly if they're willing posting that as well. Okay, well, Tara, I don't know, should we, move, should we move on to the next one or does anybody have this, I guess recruitment's going once, going twice. I know we've talked a lot about recruitment in the last few months. Um, is anybody, let me just ask real quickly before we do go on, is anybody have something from their action plan that's in the works like specifically from that that you were like, wow, this is, this is a pretty cool thing that we're excited about that we've put in our action plan. The other you question is to turn those we, in and throw them okay. like close the book. We don't want you to do that. So, so what did you, you know, where, what was ICAPS mentioned in your recruitment strategies? Was it a thought or um, considered things like that is what we're kind of looking for. And what you, what I encourage you to think about is what are you doing? Because I know sometimes when we say, Hey, what's innovative or what's exciting, you say, Ooh, that's not me, but really it is you, you just, don't give yourselves enough credit. You're all very modest and I know that. Um, so what are some things that you're doing around recruitment that you put into your action plan? Well, hi, this is Adam over at Wabanzi. Um, you know, we, <clears throat> we focus recruiting on a kind of a, 
I don't want to say grand scale in regards to, you know, social media and to print media. One of the things that we are trying to focus on now is really perpetuating that word of mouth, which we know is so crucial to our programs, um, especially in the English language acquisition areas where, you know, one neighbor saying a good thing about your program will do more than any billboard or fancy slick that you can get out there. Um, and so we've been going to our classrooms with our current posters that we have and just asking students if they would take a picture of it and post it to their their Facebook pages. Um, really getting out into, you know, um, a more granular focus on the faith based organizations, um, trying to get flyers out into the community with um, their Sunday missiles and things like that, that are, you know, um, that get out to a specific population, but really just um, kind of multifaceted approach, but really going and asking the students to say, hey, you know, take a picture of your class and shoot something out on your Facebook page or, you know, on Instagram, you know, something like that, just to kind of get that ball rolling. And uh, a lot of students jumped on it and, you know, we're taking pictures with the poster, taking pictures with their teacher, just, and shooting it out there and just working it that way. Those small grassroots efforts, hopefully will have a big impact. That's it. That's that's all. Good I stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Thanks, Adam. We appreciate that. And you know what? It's sometimes that the the simple ideas can be the best ideas. I agree with you that um, you know goodwill being shared will take you a long way. And um, Nandy, you put something in the chat, but would you mind telling the group about it? I know it's something you're just starting, but I think it's a great idea. So would you mind unmuting yourself and telling the group about it? Oh, I don't mind. I hate to talk about it because we don't actually know the results quite yet, um, but our college has a HubSpot, I don't want to say software, but it's sort of a program that you can link on a number of pages. And of course, as we're meeting with all these programs, from our college as part of our action plan, they said, well, maybe we should make you a HubSpot page like we do for such and such academic program and such and such academic program and nursing. And I'm like, oh, well, maybe it would have been nice to know about this you know, a long time ago. Um, but essentially they will create an ad and they can push it out to HubSpot, or I should say they'll post the ads in Google and Facebook that they create. And the less is more I hear on Google and Facebook both like catchy picture with a come for your free ESL or GED HSE classes. So on and so forth. And then it links directly to this HubSpot page with more information, a form to fill out that lets them get access to us if they want to hear back, you know, and don't necessarily want to enroll quite yet. And uh, so that went live, I think, li literally today, right, Libby? <laughs> and uh, we've already gotten a couple submissions. A little weird. Someone's already in college at Indiana Wesleyan and they want to know about GED. I'm like, mm. Yeah, but we we did get we get we got feedback all right. I'm mean, yeah. excuse me already in just one day, and I've I've already replied to a couple people, mm -hmm. so it's working. It's it's coming in. It and, and there, uh, there's interest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and they haven't even launched the ads yet. Those are set to go live on Monday. But working with our marketing and finding out about these other projects and products that other people use, um, and then will let us you know use something that they've been doing outreach. Your colleges are down in recruitment in general too, so they're probably looking at additional strategies and. Even if you can't afford to upkeep a head hub spot yourself, there probably is something similar in your college or in your program, even your business organization that they're looking at in terms of marketing, like constant comment, constant contact, um, things like that. So I'm sure that there are ways to push ads and places to collect the information that people can fill out forms. And that's a helpful group to recruit from, even when you're between. So that's something we just started and it links to Facebook, Messenger, Instagram, and Google. So let's see how it goes and we'll, we'll report back. And then Mandy, do you, would you mind speaking to the uh, relationship we made with uh, just recently with the Spanish community? So Center if you haven't with played with your Google or with your Facebook ads, you can create a business Facebook page ad just by linking up a credit card and boosting it for like 10 bucks. So I took roughly a hundred dollars and increased the outreach by about 6,000 people for one uh, post. 
And that netted us maybe eight responses, but a lot of views and shares, which is really cool. So uh, on suggestion from our Dean, we are reaching out to some of our community partners who have their own Facebook pages and who we know run paid ads. And one of them is our Spanish community center partner, you know, trying to look for those holes in the demographics. We all know ESL student populations are down. So trying to gather them back in and let them know they're still available not just from us telling them, but maybe from another community partner that they trust and they're going to for DACA legislation and, and lawyers now. Um, so we're going to hopefully get them to post on their Facebook as well and maybe reimburse them, you know, maybe even put on their own billboard and not just share our flyers like we know our partners have been used to doing. But that's kind of the goal. Maybe we find out if they and the Southwest Suburban Immigrant Project and all the other immigrant projects that might be partners with you could also share and create ads paid ads that might reach their subscribers a little bit more effectively. Thanks, Mandy, and thanks, Libby. And I'm excited. I'm, I'm, please keep us um, up to date on how that's going, as, but it's exciting first day. Mandy, do you have a suggestion? You said a splashy picture. What are you using to create uh, that? So once you pay for a Facebook ad, they start spamming you with good ad practices because they want the ads to be attractive too. And they do this little ad boot camp that asks you, which of these ads do you like more? And their example is manicure with a bunch of listed services and one that has a beautiful picture of manicure with, come visit us for a relaxing spa manicure. And you choose the one that has a beautiful and um, let's just say a captivating picture, something that has a lot of color, but also for our students represents something they might want, like the graduation picture is what I chose. So I put one of our graduation pictures up as a basis and said, what happens? summer classes are coming soon, you know, and check back in. And that got shared at like 10 times with 6,000 outreach. So something that they want to see, those pictures of someone in the industry it would be a really good example. Come get to the next step of your life join adult ed, things like that. Um, and it, they do, they spam you with good practices. So I've been slowly gathering them up. And we also have a really good program um, at our college. They actually did a, a training on social media practices. So you can find out if other people are doing those kind of trainings for you guys, or if you can, you know, spam us for some, I can see, I think that theirs was on Teams and you have to be in network, but I'll put our HubSpot page newly created and launched in the uh, comments so people can kind of see what it looks like. And you can often create these just on your own web page too, as like a submission form. You can't run the ad through it, but you can at least defer the ads to that page then. So when you set up a graduation picture, you used an actual picture of, of a student graduating or it wasn't a stock photo or anything? It wasn't a stock photo. We take, okay. uh, we have a fantastic photographer in our media department who comes to eat graduation each year. And I'll put, I can't put that picture in there, but it's a picture we call Wolfie, but it's the JJC Wolves and there's a mascot and they're crouching in front of all the graduates. And the guy got up on a, a tall ladder and took a picture focusing down on the 50 or so graduates that were there. So it's a really bright purple because that's the color of gowns we choose. So those pictures are always really vivid and they're well taken because it's by professional. So it always helps. Thank you very much. And you know what? Another thing that Will put in the chat was talking about um, TikTok. Is there anybody here who has had experience using TikTok? That wants to like, speak a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I'm like two generations of social media behind. I never did Snapchat. I don't think TikTok's going to happen for me. So I'm, I'm feeling very old and ignorant at this point. But apparently TikTok is a great place to, to advertise. Um, and, you know, as people maybe are weighing in on that, Thomas, I couldn't help, I also noticed your comment. Yeah, I, so to talking to the same community college marketing specialist, I found out, again, I feel very ignorant, but there's, there's geofencing. So there are ways of targeting ads so that they can just hit a certain region. And that might be something uh, to look into as well as how do you uh, geofence your, your advertising so it only hits a certain area. I don't know much about um, we, that. We, we do, we are, we are looking into that. Um, however, when you put something on Facebook or ad or whatever, people share it. It got shared over 400 oh, times. I see. So and you can't it gets control out of where our they share it to. I mean, we had yeah. even people um, from another state contact us. Um, so, I mean, it, it overwhelmed us. It spread so fast, <laughs> actually. So, um, and I, I'm assuming if someone goes to our website and fills our online registration out, if they're not in our district, legally can we share that information um, we are contacting them back and giving them giving them the information of the community college or program that would be in their area but can we legally share that information without their consent although they 
get an online registration. Yeah, that might be a tough one. So first of all, kudos for you for, for what you're trying. Second of all, kudos to you for taking the time to reach back out to them and tell them where they can get adult education services. So thank you very much for doing that. I'm, I'm not sure if you can pass that along. You might want to, um, I mean, I, I don't know if there's someone you can ask at your institution, but I think, I mean, I, it'd be nice if you could pass a lead along. I think another thing you could do is tell them the, the program, if you, if you want to look it up. The other thing is you could give them, and Amy, maybe you could speak to this, the general ways that they can engage with adult education in Illinois through the ICCB page. So that would be like some place that they could go that would just, that they basically, hey, go put your information in here and somebody will come back to you. So that's another way to maybe capture them. Um, I just to, go ahead, Adam. Sorry, I was just gonna say, but general directory information is not prohibited from FERPA. So, you know, name, phone number, address, those are quote unquote directory information. You can pass that on without any, any you know, violation of FERPA, you know, FERPA and, so I wouldn't be too worried about it. Now, if you're sending date of birth and social security number, that's a little different, yeah. but name, phone number, address, email address, those are all directory information and are not prohibitive for, by FERPA laws. And, and they do check how they prefer to be contacted. Um, I just didn't say it has to be contacted by us, I guess. <laughs> Adam, thanks for, thanks for that advice. Appreciate it very much. And I do want to mention because the, the Will mentioned the, the geofencing, um, Dan Deasy and uh, Chris McElroy from South Suburban did some training for us on geofencing. So I can go find that link if anybody wants to watch that. There's some great information out there about geofencing. So I want to mention that. And I do also want to mention, I don't think that there's anybody on from Moraine Valley today, but Moraine Valley, I do know, has used TikTok to, for recruitment. So under the promising practices on the ex um, Excellence in Adult Ed site, there's links to take you to how they have used TikTok because I'm like Will, I'm a few, I'm a few generations behind, uh, but I, I do appreciate what they did. I thought they did a great job and it was very funny, a very fun to, to watch that. Um, One more thing, Sarah, if you guys have not seen it and I know we sent it out, I just put it in the chat there. There is a link to 15 steps for adult education to set up geofencing. Um, effective marketing and recruitment. So we did that when we were back doing the um, recruitment campaign. So check out that document. It is a literally a step-by-step -step guide that was developed by ICSPS for adult education. And then with your forms, I strongly encourage you to make those as secure as possible. And there's ways to do that on Google forms, on mock form, on whatever form finder you're um, creating jot form. Um, because yeah, we want to be sure that you, if whatever information you're collecting or someone is giving to you, as a public entity that is not being shared with um, the Avon lady, to use an old term there. And apologies to anybody who is an Avon lady. Well, that's a couple of generations behind too, Amy. I, I know, that's what I said, it's a little bit behind, yeah. Sorry, I probably get myself in trouble for saying that. I, mm -hmm. I don't have anything against Avon. But so. around recruitment though, and I know we this horse we've beaten a lot, it's not dead, but we have, um, talked about it a lot, is the idea of recruitment. There's so much stuff that has gone on um, that SIPDC and ICSPS have done around recruitment that I'm going to throw the link for the main page in there as well and just check out all these great resources because many of you are on them and there's just some phenomenal research and um, practices and best practices and sharing and all kinds of fun stuff. Okay, so let's move on and talk about after ICAPS. Like Sarah said, we're kind of bookending today. So how do you help your ICAP students to prepare for what is next? Or what are some ideas that you have perhaps in the works to help your students prepare for what they're doing next? And some ideas are here. What are you doing around resume building? You know, there's so much talk now from our different departments that we can use at our schools, career departments and such about using specific words that are tied to, um, you know, job advertisements and such. So are there any efforts that you're 
thinking about doing or already doing to help your students um, search for jobs or work on their resumes? I think somebody's not unmuted. I'm just not hearing anybody, Sarah. Everyone is frozen up. So um, oh, Rebecca typed into the chat. Is Rebecca the one that's traveling? Okay, Rebecca typed into the chat that she's taking a tour with HR at the local hospital. And they're also going to sit in a CPR training next week. And I know from my past experience, talking to somebody in HR is can be helpful to students because they can get the hiring aspect of it. Because a lot of times we talk about how to keep the job and how to maintain the job and how to do that every day. But sometimes getting the job is a different hurdle. And so talking to that HR person and hearing their perspective on what are they looking for on the hiring side or what are they obligated to look for on the hiring side can also be helpful for the students. And this was Will and in some of our programs in Washington State, we've had a lot of luck with mock interviews and actually bringing that into the program, uh, whether that's something that's in the CTE part of the program or is something that's done in kind of the adult ed support piece, uh, that can be a place where students can start to practice some of those skills. And Will, I think also having that piece a part of the program can actually help to retain and motivate as well because, you know, the, again, you start to see yourself as maybe this could be my future, which I think is, is very, very important. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody else have anything that they've done? Has anybody tapped into maybe um, a community um, service and or your college? that would help you that maybe they're experts and you've been able to link into a partnership? Hello, Sarah, this is Jamil. Um, at Lincoln Lang Community College in Springfield, uh, what we do is just, we try to work internal with our internal partners and form a more cohesive relationship with our career service division, as well as workforce development division and they um, provide our students with not only presentations about um, certain job soft skills, but also mock interviews as well. So that's something, Jamil, that you've already had in place. Like, can you speak to the success of it or is it something new that you're starting? Well, full disclosure, I've only been in this seat for a year, so. Um, it's something that was developed by the prior director and, you know, I continued on with it. Uh, just basically uh, working with um, the director of career services and now our adult education division here at Lincoln Land, we report under the student, ser so student, ses student services and student success division. So, you know, it's just basically getting out, advocating for our adult ed students as far as their needs, especially as they participate in bridge and ICAPS um, type programs to um, promote um, those, uh, to take advantage and leverage those opportunities. I think that's great. And, you know, I encourage everyone to check out the career services departments at their community colleges, whether you're housed at the community college or in the greater community because those people, um, in my experience, um, the people in those departments are pretty passionate about um, sharing their knowledge, helping students with their specific resumes, um, giving presentations to the classes. Like you said, I've had a couple of them come to my classes and I provided them the information about what the class is about. So they came ready with some ideas about how to transfer some of their newly acquired skills or certifications onto their resumes. 
so that's a really great idea. So thanks for bringing that up and um, hopefully something that people can think about, you know. And then one thing that came out of COVID now, since we're doing a lot of our operations virtually, you know, um, I'm finding out that the career services and workforce development players are more willing to volunteer their time because it's a, it's a virtual activity as compared to actually having to travel somewhere. Right, maybe one positive, you know, that could continue. Even if they can't make it, you know, happy to beam you in, right? Correct. We got it. We got to take all the good we possibly can from this time. Hey, Lucas, would you possibly be willing to unmute yourself and talk a little bit about the Employability Skills Academy that you're, you've got going? Uh, sure. Um, this is a, a class already offered for uh, credit side students from the CTE department, and we're off campus. Um, so we've basically had to uh, develop a, an opportunity for our, a combination of our students to get the same uh, type of service. And it's a combination of resume writing and interview skills, um, uh, employability skills in general. So uh, that's, I think it sounds like what Sarah was asking in general. It's pretty successful so far, but our first cohort, maybe no, actually it's our second. So, and it's going well. So it's a separate class that the students attend? Yes, it's in the evening. Hmm. And it's uh, a push because um, all the extra things that are, aren't necessarily for credit themselves or, uh, you know, Kind of a tall ask sometimes and especially in these circumstances so uh but it's clearly uh after there's been so some participation it sells itself and uh again the the word of mouth uh kind of bleeds it along and the students will relay their experience to the uh, current students in their own home classes so to speak and then that's helped stock the second cohort so, so far it's been good. That's wonderful, you know, cause some programs, obviously a lot of us are thinking about how to fit everything into our classes that we already need to do. So to have the opportunity to have another class focused just on that is really great for the students. Very cool. Yeah, that happens in the evening. It's so that we can combine each of them, each of the groups. Yeah. Awesome. Hi, this is Dawn from Illinois Central College. Um, we also do some employability skills. Uh, we're piloting GPEAK right now. Uh, and GPEAK is through the Greater Peoria Economic uh, Development. And they have a platform with lessons on there um, that you can receive badges for employability skills. And this is also going to be, um, uh, there's some buy-in from the local uh, employers and it's going to be housed on WorkNet through our career link. And um, it's called GPEAK, uh, Greater Peoria Essential Employability and Knowledge um, is the title of that. Um, and so we're able to pilot that and use that in our classes as well. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing, Don. I was trying to write it down frantically. GP, that sounds great. So Mandy's asking a question, is anyone's employability skills program credit bearing? And you, a number of you are putting in the, the chat that you're doing something along employability skills, but anybody doing something um, credit bearing? GPEAK is not credit bearing, but you do get badges and 85 employers right now have signed on that have um, that said, if you have badges one and three or whatever it happens to be, we will hire you. And so there's huge buy-in on our side. So they're not credit bearing, but um, it drives employment. 
That's great. And you said, Dawn, that's going to be housed on WorkNet? It is. Mm -hmm. We just ran the pilot last semester. And um, so implementation is, is forthcoming. Right. Could you make sure that when, when that is on WorkNet, could you maybe let me know that just because we could? Sure. I'll shoot you an email. That would be wonderful. Thank you. You bet. At Run Lake College, uh, they're letting, they have an employability skills, uh, one, one credit hour class, and they're going, it's a hybrid, but they're going to allow our teachers to teach that and waive the tuition for it so that our students will also be able to have that at least one hour of college credit uh, for our various adult ed classes. Another fun note regarding the essential employability skills and the essential employability skills framework that was developed by the state in 2017 is that that is slotted for a, a facelift, revisit, whatever you want to call it this summer. So if you have fantastic programs, which I'm hearing from you, I'm kind of taking notes here and saying, who do I want to visit? Because again, that is a really um, 10,000 feet level of what business is looking for as what are those essential employability skills, but I think having the support of some examples, I know several colleges have really taken that and ran with it. Um, we'd love to have that highlighted as well. So exciting stuff going on. Thank you all for sharing. Great. Is there anything else before we move on that people wanted to share about interviewing? What do they do in their programs to help students with interviewing? I jumped to the next slide as that came up naturally. All right, hearing none right now is as we move on, we wanted to share some resources here. And again, this already kind of came up organically, but Illinois WorkNet, something to think about along these lines. Do your students have an account with Illinois WorkNet? There are many resources available here, so something to think about. And I don't know if anyone had any comments or questions about that. Here, I'm just curious, and I'll shoot it, shoot this question to Bevan. Do you have anything, because you've been working with them specifically, the Illinois WorkNet, Bevan, do you have anything you want to uh, highlight? Yeah, um, the Illinois WorkNet, actually, I know a lot of you have, have gone on or may have gone on, but it's a great place for your students to actually set up an account. They have a resume builder. They have skills and interest surveys for students. Um, they can explore careers. They also have virtual job fairs that, that students can go in and kind of practice. Um, and and it's, it's for the job seekers. Um, and so they would set that up and go in as a job seeker. We were kind of talking about like at, after you're, as you're preparing them to, to leave an ICAPS program, what are you going to do for them? And that's what Tara was talking about. We don't want to just say, okay, you're done with your ICAPS. Good luck with that. Um, and so um, we wanted to build that in. So the Illinois WorkNet is, is one online um, tool that you can use with the, the students can use to actually um, work, start working on building their resume and, and, and looking to see what kind of careers are out there, what kind of jobs are, are available. And, and, and again, the, the virtual job fair. So it's a, an employment 101 is in there as well. So it, there are a lot of things that the students could take advantage of while they're with you in your ICAST program before they leave so that they're prepared to enter the, the, the world of work afterwards. And then, the next one, Tara, I think the next one is the um, Illinois Job Link, right? Okay, and this again is one where do your students have an account? Um, this is, whereas the Illinois WorkNet is a Title I um, tool, Illinois Job Link is a Title III tool, it is IDES, and it actually has a lot of the same benefits. Um, a little different, but yet the same. It has for job seekers and it has interviewing uh, things. It has um, essential employability skills kind of linked up to it, uh, resume building, 
those kinds of things. They have a career lattice where they can explore career options, and then they can create and post their webinar to the Illinois Job Link, which is kind of cool because it's the, the Illinois Department of Employment Security's website. So just a couple of resources for you as you're preparing your students to be ready to go into the workforce when they leave your ICAPS program. Sarah, go ahead. Wonderful, thank you for sharing those insights and something else we can link our students to. So a lot of great ideas today. What do we have coming up next? Some more exciting things. So we've got a couple more dates to make sure that you have in your calendar here. May 13th is our next meeting, same time. And then we have one on June 10th. So something exciting. And if we could also put the link in the chat, that would be amazing. Um, we're hoping to have some minutes of fame, you know, some highlights, some program highlighting um, to show successes in what people are doing. Um, so we're asking you to fill out a, just a quick form just so we can kind of schedule things evenly and have people sharing. So we're really just asking you to quick, you know, five, you know, maybe 10 minutes total with questions, share some things that you're doing um, and some successes that you're having in your programs. Cause we'd love to highlight all the awesome work that's going out there in the field. And as we all know, this is how we learn and come up with new ideas and um, have some opportunities to apply some new things to our programs in different ways. So um, please go ahead and fill out that form and um, you know, tell others about what you're doing. Yeah, thank you, Tara. And I did stick in the chat that Google form. If you wanna just click on that link and um, if you're not sure if you have something to share or not, I encourage you, as Amy said earlier, you know, new ideas, innovative ideas, even if they're small, simple things, you, you all kind of just did it organically today in sharing some great ideas and helping each other along. We just thought we would take the last two to kind of schedule in that five or 10 minutes. And if you, you know, if you only do want to do two minutes, that's fine too. Just let us know. Uh, but use this opportunity, these last two learning communities to share with each other. Wonderful. So that's all we have for today. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, as always, we're here for you and are happy to bounce ideas and, you know, with you or um, help you with any questions you may have. And um, we're looking forward to hopefully hearing from you and being able to highlight some of your great work in our next meetings. So thanks again for joining us. And unless anyone else has anything to add, um, that'll be it for today. You've got an extra minute. Thank you all. Have a great day. Nice to see everyone. Take care. See you next time. Thanks, Thanks everybody. everybody. Thanks.